Laura. I'm Brittany. We're back again. I'm I'm starting to feel like, you know, we could be getting the hang of this. <laughs> it's just <Maybe>. a feeling. <laughs> yeah, hold on to that feeling. Hold, hold it really, really tight. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, back to No Shelf Control, an Essex County Library podcast. And this is episode four. Oh, my God. I know, right? <sighs> Very exciting. Let's. Let's talk a little bit about us. What's been happening in your life, Laura? Well, Brittany, you already know this, but I'm quite excited because I now qualify for a vaccine. So I have an appointment um, tomorrow to go get a vaccine. And uh, (laughs) I know it's not everybody's jam, but it is my jam, and it made me very excited. I was between tears and cartwheels when I finished um, putting in stuff for my form. A podcast is a bad format to sh- show my excitement, but know if you could see me in person, I would be doing cartwheels and a little bit of happy dances. But all of you just get to picture that at home now because you can't see it. Yes, and so our hope is that they lower the age bracket again so that uh, my co-host here can get hers as well. But it would be a very exciting prospect. And you know, it might happen by the time this episode airs. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping Mm -hmm. so. You and I were just talking last night. I was saying, I was hoping, so I live in a hotspot postal code and so does Brittany, um, that they were going to lower the age from 50. I was hoping they were going to lower it to 40 plus so that I could get in there and they did. I was exuberant today. I'm that my actually both my siblings just got it done as well they got their first shots they went to the the uh, mass vaccination place in St. Clair and they said it was like they were blown away by how quick and efficient it was and how uh, quick the nurses was so they were very impressed so I'm going to Amherstburg for mine Tim just got his today and he went to Amherstburg as well there's another one in Windsor as well. I think it's a WFCU center. And then there's the one in Leamington, which there was no appointments. So Laura's got to drive a little bit to go, but that's fine. I'll drive as far as I need to go and get it done. Absolutely. That's so exciting. I think so. I'm happy. It, may, it makes me, I just have this sense of relief. And I haven't even got it yet. <laughs> I have a sense of relief. And I was um, registered for all the pharmacy ones too, but I've been on a waiting list for three pharmacies. So yeah. This just kind of feels a little bit better. So hopefully, let's get the 30s in there next. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the all the 40s like took everything by storm. Everybody's like, forget we want to we want to go back to real life. Let's go. We want to travel again and go to the movies. Yeah, all those things. I really miss movies, Laura. Like going to a movie theater. I miss the experience, you know. The big screen, the surround sound, those big comfy seats if you go to the movie theaters these days. Like the the premium watch the movies at home is nice, but I do really miss the theater. I do too. We we did rent one this weekend for my kid's birthday. We rented um, Godzilla vs. Kong. So oh, we did watch that one at home. That's on my list. It was pretty good. It was a monster movie. Nice. It was good. But yeah, I, I do miss kind of like the, the whole outing right Mm -hmm. because there's no outings right now No, it's just your living room all over again yeah my outing is taking the recycle to the road yeah i pulled out we pulled out my bikes this weekend so i'm gonna start biking oh fun Mm -hmm. i'm i i like biking that's i want to get on that but i've told you before i'm not a real confident biker i'm a wobbly biker at start at the start i'm like i don't want to fall off and into the road well you're a crazy runner I'm not fast. <laughs> no, but you get up at early hours to run. Well, yeah, but that's there's no traffic. I'm not going to fall off my feet into the, into the traffic. True. Well, I could. I could some days. But yeah, no, biking sounds good. That sounds like a little bit of an outing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, bike, get some ice cream. Oh, yes. That sounds like a good idea. That sounds nice, eh? So that's... That's really all that's been going on with us. So let's just jump right into our hot topic. Yes. We're going to talk about gardening this week, everyone. So you might have remembered our adventure, my adventure to Colasani's and Laura's adventure to Colasani, where we got plants for our house. So we're going to spend a little more time talking about gardening today because it's tis the season, Uh, indoor, outdoor resources and all that kind of stuff. 
Yes, so I did some digging on this one, Brittany. And that's, there was actually no pun intended there. But that was a great pun. It was it was a perfect setup It was there. nice. <laughs> so I was looking at, so I've been getting more into gardening as I get older. I don't know if it's like a, it's an older person thing. I don't know. Um, but I'm getting more and more into it. We used to have our first house. We had a garden full of perennials and I hated it. I hated every single minute of it. So we ended up pulling all of those out and redoing everything. We like seeded a whole bunch of the yard and then we did smaller, more manageable gardens. And for me, that's I, that was the way I had to do it. Small, manageable bits. And then there's plants that I know that I like and plants that I know that I don't like. So I have, at this house, we've added some gardens and I told you already that I've added one last year and now I have to move it all around, which is, annoys me but I'll do what I have to do. Um, It's all flowers and plants. It's not food garden, which that's what I would like to do. That's, I want to do container gardening for that. Like a food, food container gardening? Yes. Like not growing Tupperware. Right. That seems like that would be a stretch. Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea. It would be great. But yes, like doing like plant, like food plants in containers. In containers. And that's a thing people do. Yes. Actually, I just have a book on it. Oh, that's awesome. It's called Container Vegetable Gardening. (laughs) Wow. So then you don't have to like put it, obviously, put it in the ground. You, You just keep it on your porch or something? Yeah. So it's a lot of work doing a garden, especially if you're going from, from like, oh my gosh I'm going to do another one here from the ground up so if you're starting if you're starting with a clean slate I these are all unintentional dad jokes here it's these just, are great I'm loving it <laughs> so if you have grass which I have at my house you have at your house you have to prepare all of that like you have to cut that sod out or you have to kill all of that um, you can do that putting down cardboard and then you have to bring in soil over top of it and you have to till it all. Like It's a lot of work. Yeah, that sounds like way too much work. It is. So I've got these old wash tubs. They are metal. I'm going to drill holes in the bottom so that there's drainage and put some rocks and whatnot in the bottom so there is drainage and fill that with soil and put my plants in there. Nice. And it's easier. Then I'm, I've got a smaller area to weed too. Right? So... So what's the food of choice you plan you plan to plant? Um, high on my list is hot peppers. Nice. Yes. I love hot peppers, jalapenos, anything. And I make um, candied jalapenos. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so they're like a sweet pickle jalapeno. Mm-hmm. No one else will eat it in my family, but like I can eat the whole jar myself. Nice. And I do like to make salsa too, so I'll have it for that. I'm not going to grow tomatoes. I don't think. If I do tomatoes, I'll do like cherry tomato plant, but that's it. Nice. But I have a bad feeling that my crazy dog would eat all of the cherry tomatoes off of my plant. I do too. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah. For she's... those who don't know, Laura's dog is Charlie and Charlie is Charlie is crazy. Yeah. Charlie's... We love Charlie, but Charlie's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, she's a wild one and uh, I don't... I, she chewed up my lilac bush all this winter long and it's now very tiny it's a mini lilac bush but it does have lilac it does it does so i'm happy about that that plant is a true survivor (laughs) not only winter but charlie this is very true so okay i said that container vegetable gardens there was another one i looked up so i used to watch city line i don't know if you've ever watched that i think that's like when you, when I was home on mat leave, I used to watch that. It's like a morning talk show okay. <laughs> out of Toronto. And there is a guy on there, Frank Ferragini, and he goes by Frankie Flowers. And they own a nursery up past Toronto or around Toronto area. So mm-hmm. he also has some books and they're actually really, really good, especially for our area because you're a newbie gardener mm-hmm. or like maybe not even, maybe you're like, a, I don't want to be gardener. They're all, everything is in zones. So I could read an American gardening book and not necessarily is all that going to translate over to what I do here in sure. in Leamington mm-hmm. because of our weather. And plus here we, we have a different zone than even Toronto does. It's all, it's all crazy town. This weather, I'm telling you, it's craziness. It's crazy town. So are you going to grow anything? Well, actually, you know, I have a bad history of outdoor gardening, and I have zero history, of course, with the indoor, but the outdoor, I have a bad history because 
I am lazy. I'm going to say it for the record here. And <laughs> weeding is like the <sighs> least, the thing I never, I never want to do. And so anyone who knows me will tell you they probably came to my house and seen my garden and not one that I put in. It's one that whoever I got the house from put in overflowed with weeds because I'm just like, no, that's, that's just not going to happen. So when I moved to my new house, I was very strict with myself of knowing you're not going to want to do this, Brittany. Don't do this. But then do you know what happened, Laura? What happened? My father built my mother this lovely, like, it's like a flower box maybe for mm-hmm. like her window or something yeah, like yeah. that. And I thought that would be pretty cool to like make something in a contained box. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to mulch. Like mulching, no, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to weed. So maybe if I just like got a box and put some flowers in it, maybe that'd be nice. Put it out out a window or something. Yes, planter boxes are always a good idea because you don't have to weed very much, if at all, in those. Yeah, because they're smaller spaces. Exactly. And there's less of nature to come in and interrupt it. I was going to suggest the mulch to you, but... <laughs> don't suggest mulching. <laughs> I, I'm the I'm like the mulcher at my house. Tim will go get... He has a bad back, so he'll have to go get like trailer loads of mulch. And I'm always the... I, I get voluntold, hey, we're mulching this weekend. <laughs> So I get to mulch all the gardens. My uh, mother, shout out to you, mom. I know you're listening. Uh, loves gardening. And she used to do some landscaping with a good friend of hers. So she mm-hmm. is like like the most gorgeous gardens. And she's always had these. And that meant that every summer we would buy a truckload of mulch. And all three children would go out. And they would haul the mulch into the backyard. And they'd have to spread it out. And it was an entire afternoon thing of the five olettes mulching my mother's garden and let me tell you it's made me very bitter towards mulch i bet like real bitter i would like to try and do that with my two but i know exactly what will happen is we will load that wheelbarrow and my son will drive it close to the backyard and then it'll tip over Mm -hmm. into the grass and then i'll have to clean up all the black mulch mulch. out of the grass i know no, not doing that. My, my parents saw that same problem, Laura, and solved it by making us the spreaders of mulch <laughs> and the shoveling into the wheelbarrow of mulch. So we never got a hold of the wheelbarrow. My sister would have, we had a pool in our backyard. My sister would have drove that wheelbarrow into the pool. <laughs> like it would have, that, that's all I'm picturing right now. So I'm not interested in mulching, but I'm very much now interested in the idea of some flowers. I think that's a good idea. I think for sure window boxes or even like pots. Yeah, like, that's what I was thinking. Yep. I have some pots my uh, mother donated to me and I'm thinking I'm going to fill those. And I actually found two books that are actually brand new in the library called My First Indoor Garden and My First Outdoor Garden. And they're both a long title of everything you need to know, blah, 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 insert the information there, depending on which one you've picked, either the... To everything you need to know to grow little house plants or everything you need to know to grow uh, outdoor gardening and I've put a hold on both of those so oh, I'm hoping good. to get educated I found another one when I was doing my research maybe you would like Ooh. it's called don't throw it grow it and it's a windowsill plants from kitchen scraps what yeah like you can grow new plants like from like the bottom of a celery and all different things like that wow yeah well, I told you, I think last time I said I had cut my herbs or whatever, and yeah. I'm rooting them. I'm, I did, like, four more of them. Do you think I could grow avocados? I've tried, yeah. and it didn't work. Because but... you, cause that's just like a pit, right? Can't you put the mm-hmm. pit in the ground and hopefully it grows? No, no, it's no? not that simple. <laughs> no, it's not like a seed? <laughs> I wish it was like that. No, you have to, like, put some toothpicks in it, and you put it over top of um, wa- like a jar glass of water, and the bottom oh. needs to be in the water, and then it will eventually like split the pit, and it will start to root, and it will get a shoot out of it as well. And that will grow me some avocados? Probably in 20 years. In 20 years? Well, I don't know. I don't like know. I might be exaggerating, but usually <laughs> fruit trees don't don't take don't, don't. they don't grow that fast oh, okay well then maybe i'll just continue buying my avocados. just get some cilantro or something all right there we go there we go <laughs> or yeah just keep buying it at the store i don't know but i i do want to try the avocados i tried it before and it didn't work but 
I'm not going to let that beat me. I'm going to try it again. Absolutely not. Keep trying. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. Absolutely. Um, so I also was looking at, so before COVID hit, I had been talking with the women from the Horticultural Society in Leamington, and we mm-hmm. had all these great ideas planned. I'm so bummed out that it didn't happen, but they we were going to work together and they were going to teach kids some different gardening stuff and they oh my goodness they're amazing ladies super super nice yeah so that's the leamington one so i did a little bit of googling with my friend google and pretty much every one of the municipalities has their own horticultural society so amherstburg bell river essex kingsville lasalle and leamington all have one and almost all of them have a facebook page as well so you can hop on there if, if you're like new to the area or if you're new to gardening these women were so nice and like shared so much information with me they were they were wonderful so like if you want to go and garden or whatever you're a gardener or you're starting into garden hit up those horticultural societies i think they were some of them were even doing online stuff right now i think i'm definitely going to do that because i the beginning gardener that i am would love some tips from the professionals yeah, and oh, I'm telling you, they're so nice. Um, Pixie was the um, like head or the president of the Leamington one. She was so nice. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. so it was a bummer that it didn't happen, but hopefully when we start things going again, we can do that again. Maybe we can talk them into an adult class. That would be awesome. You know, for people like me, I definitely show up for that. That would be awesome. So something else that happens in the communities, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I know this because I'm just old. <laughs> have you ever heard of communities in bloom yes oh okay good i don't feel so old then yeah so this year they are doing something called plant hope in 2021 oh, have I you heard it. of that no i've not heard of it but i love the title so what they want to do is everybody who wants to participate you can sign up online we'll put all this the links and all the information in the uh, show notes is um yellow they want everybody to do like yellow like wash their gardens in yellow yellow plants oh. and everything and so it'll be hope is growing that's awesome i thought it was so cool i'm like that is fantastic so here's a little blurb from their thing throughout 2021 anyone and everyone including municipalities organizations schools churches colleges and universities clubs businesses and individuals can participate by planting a hope garden and you share your photos of your gardens on social media with the hashtag, hashtag hope is growing. And I forget, oh, we'll, we'll add this in there when the, uh, when it closes. But I thought that was so, so cool. Okay, here is the why. Most people associate hope with a situation that they wish would end and that they could move past. Desmond Tutu once said, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. Hope whispers that things will get better. 2020 was a difficult year and people are ready for positive, peaceful change and opportunities to bring brightness and light into their lives. The Hope is Growing campaign is a rallying point that is simple, inclusive, easy, and fun with a positive outcome for whoever participates. After all, the garden is where hope is growing. Isn't that awesome? That is so lovely. So now I'm... Yellow is not one of my favorite colors. Oh. I will be quite honest there. Like, my favorite stuff is black flowers. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Is, black that, petun- is that a thing? Yeah, black petunias. They're awesome. Wonderful. But I'm going to get some yellow because th- I love this idea. I think I, this I is fantastic. Like- and how to, like, bring a community, th- all the communities together. Oh, so dates for posting photos are May 1st to August 31st. No product purchase is necessary. Open to all individuals across Canada. I think it's awesome. awesome. I think that's great. I hope we see all the towns. Hey, anybody from towns that are listening, like Board of Works and whatnot, if you haven't planned all of your flowers yet, throw some yellow in there. Absolutely. And send us pictures. Yes. Send them pictures and then send us pictures. Yeah, I love it. I think it's so cool. Um, Yeah, like for yellow stuff. Because, yeah, that's like hope. And I think that is wonderful, and I think that's a positive spin on everything in times when maybe we don't always feel so positive. Absolutely. So, okay, we'll go away from that, and I'm going to tell you, yes, black petunias are the best. I oh. love them. Well, now I want to get some. Yes, yeah, so I go to a little place, a little 
like greenhouse and they're only open for like the, the this early season like may june it's called moody's flowers so they're out closer to wheatley and that's where i got planters last year tim wouldn't let me get them at first because like, i don't want black flowers because tim is mr colorful like tim would be a box of crayons if he was anybody i would just be like the boring like neutral pencil crayons <laughs> And he, so he's like, no, let's get these purple ones. Let's get these blue. Da, 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 da. Really, what he would like is the yellow. So he'll be into this. And I saw these black and white petunia bowls. They were so gorgeous. I loved them. Oh. High contrast. So it's black, but it's it's more like a really, really dark purple. Okay. But they are ca- they're called black petunias. Okay. They're gorgeous. That's awesome. I love them. I think Cindy's has them. Somebody sent that. To some one of my friends who knows I like black petunias sent me that link that Cindy's was growing black petunias this year to sell. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Black and yellow. We can have all the bees. Absolutely. We got to help those bees. Exactly. And, uh, you know, Laura, uh, Essex County Library, of course, we launched a seed library this year all over the county. Mm-hmm. And it's gone very well. And actually, we're doing a, a little bit of a contest right now. Um, to grow the tallest sunflower or the largest pumpkin. And it gives you a chance to win a $100 gift card of a local business of your choice. So the entry form will already be out by the time this episode airs. Mm -hmm. And the contest is from May 5th through October 6th. So check our Facebook uh, for more details. But that's just launching this month. I love that. That's something I always look at at the Harrow Fair. Is the pumpkin? They, well, they always have like these, like growing the huge sunflowers and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I always like that. I find that really interesting. Absolutely. I don't know why, but I do. No, oh, that's awesome. So I let's thought. see. Let's see, you guys. Hopefully yeah. you plant all this stuff and let's see it. Absolutely. And Seed Library should be back next year too. So if you missed it this year, just like mark it on your calendar or watch our socials and stuff like that because yes. it should be back next year, yes. I'm sure, because it went over really, really well. Yeah, Again. and give us a follow on uh, Facebook and Instagram and our YouTube because we, we post all that information on there, so you don't want to miss anything. Exactly. And we're going to post in the show notes some of the other gardening resources that we have because I went through and I, I got a lot of stuff on there. There's some really awesome Canadian gardeners like Mark Cullen. He, I don't know if anybody watches Canadian Tire commercials, but he is <laughs> always talking about grass and whatnot on there. And my dad even has some of his books. My dad has, my dad is like particular about his yard. Yes, his lawn. Yeah, he spends hours on his lawn. They have a big yard and he is Mr. Lawnmower. And he knows he makes all the different like concoctions to put on his grass and everything. And Mark Cullen is a big one that he has read over the years. So yeah, and there's gardening magazines on Overdrive, which I was just looking at, or Libby, sorry. I haven't made the switch in my head yet. But I was looking at the magazines. I'm like, ooh, gardening magazines on here too. We got so many great magazines on Libby now. It's, it's, if, if for those who maybe borrowed our magazines before from like RB Digital and that kind of thing, the Libby platform has definitely improved it and has expanded our collection by a ton. I can't even believe it. So give it, if you haven't checked out the magazines on Libby, please do because we have all new ones and it's pretty great. And there's international ones on there too. I know because I get Empire, which is a UK uh, movie kind of magazine. It always does the big like Marvel box office hits, Harry Potter and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, big interviews like that. And the only way to get it is to buy it at Chapters. It's quite expensive. Um, And now I get it for free on Libby, so I'm pretty thrilled. That's awesome. Plus then you don't have the extra paper. Yeah. Right? I do collect certain magazines, so those are ones I'm like, I do like to get those ones. But even Food and Drink, which I always grab if I go to the LCBO or people grab for me because I love that magazine. They've got an app, and now I just do that one. That's awesome. I love it, and I can keep it right there because I have quite a stack. Yeah. And, like, one day my kids are going to be like, why did you keep all these magazines, Mom? (gasps) For goodness sake. I don't know. I thought you would want them. No, no, we don't. No one thinks that. No, I know. Okie dokie. So like I said, we're going to put all that extra info in the show notes. So if you're not 100% sure what we mean when we say show notes, 
when you're on the YouTube page, there's going to be this little arrow. If you click that, it's going to expand everything underneath and underneath that are going to be all the show notes. So mm-hmm. anything that we've mentioned, uh, websites, books, anything, all the information that we talk about in there on this podcast is going to be in there. Absolutely. That's right, right, Brittany? I try, uh, that is absolutely right. Okay. I try to be as detailed as possible. Yes, because she is the very organized show note writer. I try. I know you do. So it was cooking time this week. Oh, was it ever? And it was no biscuits. No well, biscuits I'll tell you this that. time. <laughs> no biscuits. No, no baking. No. So we made a recipe from Lynn Crawford's Farm to Chef cookbook. And I've already fangirled about her, I think, twice in these. So I'm not going to do that again because it gets embarrassing. Um, our recipe was pea meal on a bun with spring onion relish and honey aioli. So what did you think, rookie cook? I thought it was pretty darn good, Laura. I thought so too. And so it had a couple of things that I had I didn't own. I know no one listening is probably surprised anymore. So I had to uh, purchase it like... Um, full grain mustard or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Whole yeah. grain mustard. Sure. I don't, I didn't have that. Do you, do, do you have that, Laura? Yeah. Yes, of course you do. <laughs> um, I didn't have the chili pepper that it asked for. So I bought, I bought some of those and I didn't have the white wine vinegar. So those were the three things I had to go out and get besides, of course, like I had to buy more bacon, but that's cause there's never enough bacon. No, there never is. So I had to buy white wine vinegar too, cause I was out. Mm-hmm. And then I needed the chili peppers as well, but my good friend Brittany ordered them and got so many. We only needed one. How many were in that package? Um, I didn't count, but there is at least a solid 30 in that package. Yes. Like so. I, it said on the, so I buy my groceries online on the app and then I pick them up curbside, right? Mm-hmm. And it said on the thing, one. And I was like, okay, that's all I need. One chili pepper. And I thought it was a little expensive for one chili pepper. Yes, because it was three ninety eight. I had seen the same yes. thing. <laughs> and I was like, God, that's expensive for a chili pepper. Just one of them? And I was like, okay, you only live one. So I get the chili pepper. I pick up my groceries. I bring them home. And I pull out a whole package of hot chili peppers. And I'm like... Oh my god. I'm like, well, I guess the three ninety eight makes sense now, but what am I gonna do with these hot chili peppers? So I gave half to Laura. Oh, that's funny. And actually I felt like it could have used more. I didn't even taste it. I didn't taste it at all and I'm very sensitive to spice. I don't like any sort of heat to my food. And uh, I didn't taste it at all. And my partner who loves spice said that if we made it next time, he was definitely going to be adding some more chili peppers to it. Yes, my critics didn't notice it at all. Um, Somebody eyeballed the red in it and said, Mom, what is this red? Is this hot pepper in there? I said, you're not even going to taste it. (laughs) That's what you say, Mom, because that's all you like, hot stuff all the time. I said, seriously, you're not going to taste it. And I didn't. I didn't taste it at all all either. So I I second that. Uh, It was a good recipe, like not uh, difficult to make. I didn't struggle with it at all. Um, it's just a lot of, a lot of steps. Yeah. It was a fussy recipe. Yeah. It, cause you have to make the aioli and mm-hmm. then you have to make the relish and mm-hmm. then you got to cook, uh, the, the bacon and then you have to make like a, like, I guess what you'd call it, like a rub, like for mm-hmm. the bacon, a honey mustard rub. Like a glaze. A glaze, maybe that's A the rub word. is would be dry. Would be okay. like dry no, this is so definitely a glaze. glaze. So yeah. you put it on before you put the the bacon in the pan. So it was like really three different concoctions you had to make besides like then cooking the bacon, the cooking the female bacon, right? So it was a little it was a little bit of work that way, but it was very very good. It was for me, it was probably the least amount of work. Like the the breakfast bake we did the first time. Yes. Oh my! Wow, that was more work. Yes. This I agree. was fiddly stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But at least it was like three different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we all liked it at my house. Yeah, it was a hit in my house. Um, we made. I think it says something like. So I bought my female bacon from. Uh, the Butcher of Kingsville. Shout out to you guys. You're awesome. And they had bigger slices. So the recipe says four pieces of female per sandwich. The, please base that off of the size of your female bacon slices because four was way too many for us. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was very thick. 
Yeah, well, no, we ours only wasn't put like two on. Um, I only put two slices. I think I put three on ours, but ours were smaller. Mm-hmm. And I think for the kids, I did like two slices, and then mm-hmm. Tim and I did three slices. Mm-hmm. Um, Tim suggested it should have cheese, and I would agree. Like a cheese would be nice on it. Yeah, and I I was thinking so it has female bacon, which mm-hmm. is kind of like the main meat to it, I would say. But it also has maple bacon on it as well that goes into the relish and i would have done maybe like i was i was talking about it with patrick but like i would have maybe taken out the female and i would have added like like it to like maybe made it more of kind of like a blt with some turkey or something like that Mm -hmm. i thought that because the the honey aioli and the relish are (sighs) very very good yes so i think there's like a hundred different things you could do with those two um Add extras, sauces, maybe I guess I'll call it, um, besides the female, but the female was still really good. Yes, I agree. So Tim said this could use cheese, like a white cheese. I would agree with that, like a Havarti or something would have been good on it. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> I did not put the bacon in because I didn't feel like also cooking bacon along with it because mm-hmm. you have now learned that I don't necessarily follow all the recipe because generally I'm not reading it <laughs> until I'm doing it. I did buy the bacon and I was like, I'm not putting bacon and female bacon in this. That's too much. That's a little bit of lazy was coming out. So we are the house that saves bacon grease. Like you can just <gasps> all you want while you're listening to it, but that's just something that we do. And um, Is that bad? Because we do that too. I don't know. I think some people think it's gross. Oh, no. Baby bacon is very delicious. Yes. And it's Tim great. is, we always save the bacon grease. And it's, oh, but it's like a clean bacon. It's not like gross bacon grease. And we keep it in the fridge. It's not like we just keep it whatever and it doesn't go rancid. Yeah. But we use it. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm like, not, the amount we have is never the amount we use because mm-hmm. my goodness, we bacon would have, we would have some grease. problems. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I used some of the bacon grease to cook my stuff for the relish. So I got a little bit of that bacony taste to it. Yeah. Cause you put the, the maple bacon in with the relish, like you're mm-hmm. cooking it all together in a pan. So it, it kind of all mixes in together like that. It's kind of part of the relish in a way. And it was, it was really good, but I could definitely see it's two bacon seems kind of weird to me. I would have, I would have switched one of the bacons out for something else. Yeah, I think we were talking about it the other day. I think turkey would it would be solid with turkey, mm-hmm. like a turkey sandwich with white meat. That would be really good, actually. Yeah, actually, it would be good with anything. So I had leftover of everything, obviously. Well, not pea meal, or we would have made more sandwiches. So I had made potato salad with mine, and I took my um, relish and I mixed it into my potato salad, and it was really good. Nice. Yeah. And I still have some of the aioli left because it's, it keeps in the fridge. And I put it on my hamburger last night when I got home. Nice. It was good. It was really good on yeah, my hamburger. So we saved. So you make you don't make enough honey aioli or you make too much honey aioli in the recipe. Like it, it, it more than covers the amount you need for the sandwiches. So it does say in the recipe that you can put it in the fridge for a week. So uh, we have done so and I plan to use it when we barbecue again because it was good. Yeah, I think it'd be good on sausages too, like barbecued sausages. Yes. Because if anybody doesn't know what an aioli is, I do. And, not. Okay, so an aioli is like a garlicky mayo. Okay. Pretty that much. Like that's 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 a like a really dumbed down explanation of it. Like I'm sure there's more technical mm-hmm. things to it, but pretty much it's a garlic mayo is is aioli. And then this one we you added honey and the whole grain mustard. Did you have lemon juice to it too? I did, and I accidentally added lime juice as well for some reason. Oh. I had lemon and lime, and I was measuring out the lemon and then went in and put the same amount of lime in, and I was like, I don't know why I just did that. But oh well, I didn't notice the lime, so no. it's not a problem. Lime is not really strong anyways. You just want that acid taste, mm-hmm. right? So I really liked it. And we have local honey at home too, which, man, local honey tastes better than anything else. And I'm not a big honey person, but... I can taste the difference between that and just like the stuff you buy at the store. Nice. Yeah. So it was really good. So in my family, Tim gave it a four and a half out of five. Elise said she really liked it. She didn't give it a number, I don't think. Max said four, good but not great. But for Max, a four is a high rating. Mm. And for me, I yeah, I would give it for sure. I would give it five out of five. It was for sure a make again supper. 
Yeah. Pat- Patrick really liked it. Uh, he's eating it for leftovers this week, so that's a really good sign. And my father was over dropping off my bike, and he was like, what are you cooking? And I was like, oh, I'm making these sandwiches. And he said he would have had two because I gave him one, and he goes, they were so good I would have had two. And I was like, oh, there you go. I want to make that if we ever have people over again. Um, I would make that for my family. I think yeah. my parents would like that. I think Tim's parents would like it too. It's just really tasty. It was good, good sandwich. So I would say for sure – Check out Lynn's book, Farm to Chef. It's really nice. And it's very cool because it's all it's all Canadian and mm-hmm. it's all uh, organized by season and then by like the vegetable or fruit of your choice. I love how it's organized by season. Mm-hmm. That is really, I like that because sometimes you're thinking, okay, what am I getting in the spring? And I'm a rhubarb lover and there is a section on rhubarb in there in the spring. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Absolutely. The summer section is quite large because that's the best thing. And she's from Ontario, so a lot of that stuff would be what we would be able to get to, right? Yeah. I thought that was – I liked it. So we – our next episode is no cooking, then we're cooking after that. Mm-hmm. And what what cookbook are we doing again? We're doing Antony in the Kitchen, Laura. I love Antony. Yeah, so for those who don't know who he is, he is a host of one of five of the Netflix hit show Queer Eye. If you haven't watched Queer Eye, feel free to pause this episode and just go watch (laughs) it. Um, Thank me later. And he is... uh, a cook uh, as well and he came out with his own cookbook which uh, I own because it's so good the library has it so feel free to put it on hold if you want to prep because uh, we're going to pull a recipe out of that yes and he was a model he is a very fine looking man and Canadian yes he's from Montreal isn't he correct yes that's what I thought if you go watch Queer Eye make sure you have some um, tissues with you because oh, I you cry every tissues. single episode yeah Go Everyone. go get tissues and then go watch the show. Thank, thank us later. Yes. So I'm excited for that one. We haven't chosen our recipe yet, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be good because I've already flipped through it with you and it, there's some stellar ones in there. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. So we'll announce the recipe next episode. That's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we've already gotten to our About Town section. So Brittany, what uh, is going on in the community? <laughs> What is what's going, going what's going on? That's like a trick question in COVID land right now. Uh, so we're still in our lockdown. So we haven't uh, but the nice thing about I guess this lockdown is that the weather is turning nicer. So I remember feeling some really heavy COVID winter blues in January and February and even March because you just felt like so trapped inside the house. And now I feel less that because of the weather. Cause you can go out. Cause we went to Point Pelee National Park on Saturday. That is, we've been, but just, we just drove through. We were too lazy to get out of the car. No. Yeah. We walked down to the point. It was very short. The point uh, at the, the time. The tip. The tip. That's what, yeah. Leamington people. The point is the whole park. The tip is where you walk down to. Okay. I, so the tip I, of the point. I stand corrected. The tip was Sorry, very short. I just, there's That's all okay. these things. One must a learn. A Leamingtonian or Leaming Tonight or whatever mm-hmm. I'm going to call myself. That's the tip. So, okay. Well, the tip was very short, um, but uh, I'm told that happens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it changes with the current. It's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be huge, like, and it'll go way, way, way out. And then sometimes there'll be, like, nothing, nothing. there. Nothing. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. The observation deck, which I know, Laura, you have talked about, was closed due to COVID. So we didn't get to go up there. I'd like to say for the record, I wouldn't have gone up there. But my sister was very excited to go up, and we didn't get to go up. Well, that just means you have to go back. Yes. Well, we already decided to because we only walked to the tip. And then we went through the boardwalk because I had never been on the boardwalk. Which and I can't believe. I, well, I just, I don't know. I've never been there. It was lovely. Um, but we want to go back and do some of the trails. So next year, I'm going to remind you when the, the special comes on to go and get that pass. Yeah, because we were even considering it there at the booth. Uh, we got, we got there was, there was four of us going um, and... The lady was like, oh, well, I'll give you a group, the group discount to go in. And we were like, oh, that's awesome. She goes, if you keep coming back, you should consider the pass because it, it'll save you quite a bit of money. And I yeah, said, well, oh, that's awesome. So we're we're going to consider it. 
Yeah, you should. I think it's it's a good thing to have. It was nice when the kids and I were like, let's just go to the point. And I didn't have to go scrounge for any money. <laughs> I just had my little card there and I tapped the card on there and away we go inside. I love the point, but I've grown up in Leamington. I've lived here all my life. So it's something I'm I'm very like aware of. And sometimes you even forget that it's in your own backyard because the trails are nice. Like take your bike. The trails yeah. are awesome. Awesome. Okay. We did have an issue one year when we went. <laughs> the four of us went for a bike ride. So we all we put throw the bikes in the truck and we drive there and we get out and we start riding. Oh, I got a flat tire. <gasps> so we got to go throw my bike back in there. I'm like, okay, I'll walk. You guys ride bikes. Fine. So as I'm walking in there riding, all of a sudden I hear this blood curdling scream. No. Max fell off his bike. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know if he couldn't, he didn't break or whatever. And so to this day, he refuses to go on the bike trails because remember when I almost died on that bike trail, mom? Huh? Yeah, I, I remember. I remember. I remember. <laughs> it's really not that dangerous. <laughs> If you know how to use the brakes on your bike, you're fine. <laughs> or Max. I know. So another, I'll tell you another thing. So this is, I get made fun of for this all the time because you didn't grow up in Leamington and I get made fun of this from Tim all the time. So the tip, I don't know if anybody's listening is aware of the tip. So it has quite the current. Yes, right? there's all the signs for it. Yeah. And there's even like a memorial plaque and everything because mm-hmm. many, there's been people that have drowned there and everything. It's it's uh, yeah it's bad you don't go swimming there but ingrained in I feel like the kids of my era <laughs> who used to go to Point Pelee for field trips and whatnot you don't even stick a toe in that water you stick your toe in that water it's gonna suck you out <laughs> as, as I was like, we were there we brought my my dog Padfoot who is a black lab and he does not like water he is a weird lab who doesn't like water so when the waves come like not waves but like when the current comes up Mm -hmm. and it's like the foamy like white stuff Mm -hmm. he attacks it by like putting his paws on top of it and trying to bite the water because he thinks it's like dangerous i had to have a very firm grip on him because i was very paranoid that if he went in at all i was like i'm gonna lose my dog so he only like he just got the tippy toesies of his claws wet so then you have you you now have my paranoia. <laughs> yeah. There. Well, the signs are very effective, may yes. I say, as someone who reads signage. <laughs> Not everyone does. Not everyone does, but no. if you're a signage reader, it really gets you. Yes. Now that was I feel like that was hammered home to like my grades all the time was like you don't go in the water at the tip. You don't go in the water at the tip. I'm sure I could put my toe in there and I'd be okay, but I'm not going to chance it. Just like I'm not going to put a plastic bag anywhere near my head. Because that was also something that was a big deal when I was a kid. Don't put plastic bags over your head. Like, I get made fun of for that one all the time, too. Tim's like, what do you think it's going to immediately suction to your face if you put... We still are of the generation that calls it an AMP bag. An AMP bag over your head? I'm like, I don't know. It's an irrational fear, much like my fear of the tip. It's like as a kid, you know, I thought... You know, something like quicksand was going to be much more of a threat to me as an adult. Do you remember that? All the cartoons (laughs) had quicksand in it. Yes. And you were like, do you just, is it just going to appear on the street? And as an adult, I have never seen quicksand, never less, never the less gotten near it. And I'm like, why do all the cartoons talk about quicksand? That's not a thing. It's like the whole Bugs Bunny dropping an anvil on your head. No one has anvils anymore. No, why? that's true. They don't. Why? Why? Why is it the thing always getting dropped on Wiley e. Coyote's head? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not a Bugs Bunny fan, but I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah it's just it's, it's it's a bit of an aggressive show. Yeah, but now I get nervous at the thought of anvils. Well, I'll watch out for you whenever we go. Thank anywhere. you. I appreciate that. I'm on Anvil Watch. You can mm-hmm. you can count on me. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm trying to think if I did anything. And I, I really want to say I don't think I did anything since the last time. This we're is a on surprise. Here. This is my, no one can see my face except for Laura, but this is my <laughs> surprised expression. Really, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain here. Really, we didn't do anything. We rented that movie. We've driven in the point. That's, that's about it. We live very, live very exciting lives, Laura. I hope that eventually it gets a little more exciting. Now, the nurseries and garden centers are opening. I am very 
cautiously optimistic that I will go to one mm-hmm. and not be stressed out. Mm-hmm. Now, they're only at 25% capacity with the current state of affairs. Mm-hmm. So for me, that feels okay. Mm-hmm. I usually wait until well, closer to um, Victoria Day weekend to buy anything. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I know that's not really popular, but it still gets cold. It snowed last week. Yes. Right? So I don't really want to spend a whole pile of money on my plants and then they get frosted or wrecked from all the weather now i say that and i probably will hit it beforehand because i'm just like over anxious i just want to look at something Mm -hmm. different and something nice i have some planter boxes my father-in-law made me and i have to paint those actually before i get my planters so maybe that's what i'll have to do this weekend so i'm not going anywhere i'll have to use the paint to have at home Mm -hmm. so that's really not exciting but (laughs) Eh, it is what it is yeah i think i want to get a planter box and i want to get some sort of like a, I don't know, like a, an urn or I don't know, whatever you put an individual plant with outside your house. I want to get one for outside my door. Yes, my I think door. that's a good idea. I always buy, like, I used to buy the individual plants and now I buy it already done up because mm-hmm. it just ends up looking nicer. Yeah. But, and yeah, that just is what ends up. And I'll take it right, you can take it out of that container and put it in something different. So if you have a favorite garden center, you could drop it in the comments too if there's one that oh, yes. you particularly like. Yes. Um, because I hadn't gone to Moody's until last year and I'm like, oh, I love it. So we so, got Moody's, yeah. mm-hmm. Anne's. Yeah, Anna's. Anna's. Capona's. Capona's. Um, these are all Leamington ones, everybody. So Peanut Center Nursery. Um, there's all of all kinds of them. Um, there's, one, there's one I'm totally blanking out on too. Well, Cindy's. There's so many. I know there. Bloom and Gardener. There's so many across, and I love it because it's just like looking at life again, right? Mm-hmm. And find your yellow flowers. Find your everyone. yellow flowers. Send. Put in the comments any nurseries or places you think we should go to get our flowers mm-hmm. and our planters, and uh, let us know if you're planning on getting some yellow flowers this year. For sure. And if you know of any other ones that have black petunias. Oh yes, help Laura with her black petunia. Yes. Hunt. Because I will be getting more than just a couple of planters. Like, that's mm-hmm. how I got hanging baskets. So if you see them, like, like uh, randomly somewhere, mm-hmm. I will go get some. Because okay. I love me. And I have another friend, my friend Emily. She's the one who got me onto the black petunias. She And she has such a good eye. So she likes them too. So I keep my eye out all over. But yeah, <laughs> yellow and black will be the, uh, the, the theme, theme this year. Yeah, I think that's okay. The bees will be thrilled. They t- Totally will be thrilled. Are you going to put them in like stripey patterns so it looks like a bee? Oh, I could do that. You could do that. I could do that. It that, would look very funny. It would look It would look kind of neat. I but think. I think the bees would like it though. They might. They'd appreciate the effort. My kids would not like all the bees there. So yeah. then I will have another story uh, like next fall when I tell you instead of the <laughs> bike crash story, it'll be the bee swarm story. So... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that'll go down. But I think that's all we've got this week. I, it's I, a I think shorty cover, this week. It's, it's short, but you know what? I think it's you know it's COVID, and we're we're not really at spring yet. We're still getting into it, so I think I think it's only gonna get better. Oh yeah, I think so for sure. I think we just look at it positively, and we plant our hope in our gardens. And uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. And then hopefully you won't just hear our voices. You'll be able to see our faces sometimes. I think too. that's the goal. I, it's totally the goal. Totally. Completely and totally the goal. Absolutely. But we still would like to do this. Absolutely. So keep listening to us. Yeah, keep listening. Comment, like, follow. All of that helps us. For sure. Um, and check out our Facebook page and our Instagram feed. See if there's anything new going on in case there's something we forgot to mention, which... I'm old. I forget stuff all the time. It could happen. It could absolutely happen yeah. to either of us. All right, Laura. I guess it's time to sign off. So this is episode four of No Shelf Control. I hope you join us again next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>